Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sheakol Nye Bitcha. A couple of months ago, toward the end of last year, there was a tremendous event in Qatar. That was the World Soccer Championship. And people all over the world watched the different games that were played. I myself, who normally doesn't watch that much sports, I watched a couple of games, especially the last one. It was charged with emotion where I think Argentina and France were the ones that played at the end and Argentina won and there was tremendous manifestations in Buenos Aires and all over the world. People were glued to their television sets watching what was going on. And it was very interesting to see how people manage uh, football, how their feet are really the owners of the ball. It reminded me of the book, The Outliers. The Outliers tells you that all the great champions aren't born champions. Maybe they have some talents, but they have to spend days, years practicing weekly. God knows how many hours they practice in order to become professionals and to be outstanding in that sport, of course. So it was tremendous to watch that and the entire world. And it's good. It's a healthy thing. You know, people aren't killing themselves. You are really putting up your intelligence your dextrosity, how you move your limbs, how you dominate a ball uh, with somebody else. I thought it was a very interesting experience. But on the other hand, who invented these things? I think it was the Greeks and the Romans that have in these circuses, competitions and so on. Even in Jewish tradition, you have something called kinat sofrim, the competition among the intellectuals increments knowledge. In other words, when savants, people who are studious, compete with one another, what you do is you gain more knowledge for everybody else. But on the other hand, take a look at what happens in these things. You know, you say one about one uh, team, he killed them. You know, you use words that are terrible, really. Kill them. You don't mean literally kill them, but use the word kill them. You know, made nothing out of them. Made sand, dust out of them. In Spanish, in other languages, they use the same thing. And how do you measure yourself? You measure yourself next to somebody else. If you are better than him, you're good. But if you're not, if you're not better than him, then you're bad. And also you measure yourself against somebody else. But you don't measure yourself against some basic principles that are really steady, been there forever, that serve as some kind of mirror of what you are doing, if you are accomplishing or you're not accomplishing. <laughs> So you measure yourself against somebody else. As a matter of fact, it's not only the players that measure against, it's the people that support them. You know, I support this team and you support another team and we are in competition with each other. It has ramifications all over. Instead of judging myself by certain principles, I judge myself by what somebody else can do. And even among the spectators, many a time there are confrontations that become physical. When you say, I'm going to exterminate the enemy, it means sometimes actually I'm going to exterminate somebody else. It's terrible, you know. There are good things and bad things like in everything in this world. So what I'm trying to say is, of course, look at what somebody else can do. But the most important thing is to look at yourself in the mirror and try to find out where your own strengths are. Forget about what somebody else can do. What can you do? What are your basic talents? Examine yourself. Golda Meir, in one opportunity, said, you'll never know what your inner strength is until you come to a situation where your inner strength is the only alternative. When you find yourself in an extreme situation, that is when you realize really what your potential can be. So 
I don't want to minimize the importance of competition. I think it's important, but I don't think this should be our daily bread. It's good maybe once in a while to compete with somebody else, but most important thing is to look to your inner strength. What are your qualities? What can you do with your own personality in order to grow, in order to become a better human being? And I think this is what you should teach your children. There is competition among your children. One excels in one thing and the other one excels in something else. Teach them to look into themselves. What are their own strengths? And they will realize in extreme situations when their own strength is the only alternative, how far their own strength can go.